Hey guys, Lawrence DeMonico here. I wanted to give you guys an update on the ATF situation. Um, we've all seen the letter that is spreading like wildfire across the interwebs um, regarding the ATF's plans to steal private property from dealers. And of course, I'm referring to the FRT-15. Although I cannot yet authenticate this letter that's you know allegedly being circulated by the ATF, I can tell you that we've received word from one dealer in Illinois late yesterday afternoon stating that the ATF had paid them a visit, hand delivered them a cease and desist, and then quote unquote had taken FRT 15s uh, from them. I've yet to actually speak to anyone at this dealer, so I have zero details to share. I don't know anything um, about that. Um, I'm trying to make contact, but right now I'm jumping through hoops to deal with you know the issue. Um, I don't know if the dealer just voluntarily you know handed over. Um, you know, the triggers or if the ATF came in hard and, you know, seized them. I don't have that information yet. Now, while we, Rare Breed Triggers, already has, you know, a tremendous amount of experience dealing with what I'm going to call the ATF's, you know, corrupt and dirty practices, I will tell you that my jaw is absolutely on the floor in complete disbelief that they are choosing to take action based on an illegitimate examination and report that was conducted by David Smith and then approved by Earl Griffith at the ATF tech branch. The report is chocked full of easily provable falsehoods and what I'm going to say are just outright lies. Um, and each of these have been pointed out and testified to under oath in federal court. Now, I'm going to make a very interesting point that I want you guys to take away and hear this. The DOJ and ATF refused to allow David Smith, the guy that created, that performed the exam and then created the report on the FRT-15. The DOJ and ATF refused to allow him to take the stand and testify under oath to the accuracy of his report. Why would they do that? Like, why on earth would you do that? He's a government employee. Why would you refuse to and prevent him from taking the stand to testify to the accuracy of his report. I can only think of one reason why you do that, and that's maybe if the report wasn't accurate. Now, I've got an even more significant point that I want to make, and it's another big one to take away. Brian Lutke, he is one of the expert witnesses in this case. He's a former ATF special agent, and he actually trained David Smith at the ATF Academy. Now, Brian Lukey took the stand and testified under oath that if Mr. Smith were to take the stand and testify to the accuracy of his report, that he would be committing perjury. He said that under oath on the stand that David Smith would be committing perjury if he testified to the accuracy of his report. So maybe, maybe, that's why they refused to allow him to take the stand. Um, now, while under, on the stand under oath, Brian Lukey also stated that one of the biggest problems with this exam and report is that any future action taken by any agency across the country would be based on that report. They would hinge on the accuracy of that report so think about that for a minute. All actions being taken are based on an illegitimate exam and a falsified report. Now, I'm going to give you guys just one. I mean, the exam and report are just chock full of trash. But I'm going to give you an example of one. Mr. Smith stated in the report that the bolt carrier's forward movement automatically releases the trigger and hammer, allowing the weapon to expend a second projectile without a separate pull of the trigger. Now this is completely inaccurate and entirely untrue. And he, in my opinion, intentionally and maliciously left out a very important step that actually makes the FRT-15 a semi-automatic trigger. So what step did he leave out? Let's talk about that. When the carrier comes forward and strikes the locking bar, the trigger is unlocked. Only after the trigger is unlocked can it be functioned. 
And of course, functioning the trigger to the rear is what releases the hammer. It's very clear, it's very simple. He's intentionally trying to mischaracterize the truth. And how do I know that this wasn't a mistake or an accident on Mr. Smith's part? Well, as most of you already know, we've got an animated video posted on our homepage that clearly demonstrates exactly how the FRT-15 functions. It's plain, it's simple, and it can't be misunderstood, especially by someone that examinates firearms as a profession for the ATF. He can't misunderstand that. And heck, did he even bother to function test the FRT-15 uninstalled or installed in an AR-15? It takes less than a second to manually push the locking bar forward with your thumb. It takes less than a second to push the locking bar forward with your thumb to see that it doesn't release the trigger and hammer. Further, it's plainly obvious that the FRT can only expend one round per rearward function of the trigger. To say anything different is entirely disingenuous. So anyway, how do I know that this step being left out was intentional and malicious? Well, it's super simple. Mr. Smith didn't include our animated video in his examination and report. He included a screenshot of the video. So, including a screenshot proves he knew about the video, but he made a conscious decision rather than to include a full video that is very clear to choose one still image and include it in his report so that it would support his mischaracterization of the truth. And then, of course, the ATF and DOJ filed a motion in limine to prevent us from submitting that same exact video into evidence. They didn't want the judge to see the video. It's very clear. They did not want the judge to see the video. They chose to add a still image of the video into the administrative record, but chose to leave the actual video out of the administrative record. Well, that was done by design. And I feel that David Smith and Earl Griffith have intentionally created and released an illegitimate exam and report. Absolutely. Now, keep in mind that this is just one example. I mean, it's literally just one example of how much BS and lies and mistruths are in the examination report. Their entire case is based on lie after lie after lie, and it's just downright dirty. Now, I'll put together another video as quickly as possible that clearly demonstrates this portion of their report being false. Now, the ATF has this video, along with numerous expert witness statements that rebut their examination report, along with transcripts from the last hearing where the special agents took the stand and swore under oath that one, David Smith would be committing perjury if he took the stand and testified to the accuracy of his report, but also numerous, numerous rebuts of many, many issues in their examination report. Now, there's no denying that they're aware that their report is bad, but they're still ordering special agents or other ATF employees to act on enforcement based on this illegitimate exam and falsified report. Now, to me, it's unconscionable that they would do this and you can guarantee we'll be filing a new lawsuit just absolutely as soon as possible. Now, this news was first put out by the GOA yesterday. Now we've been in contact with them for more than six months now, but we've yet to receive any support from them or any other like 2A group. Now we have a call scheduled with them today. That's fantastic. Um, and hopefully now that the ATF is attacking individual citizens, you know, freedom and liberty, maybe they'll finally, you know, step up and offer to provide us some assistance. Because I'll tell you what, I would be happy to have all the help that we can get for sure. Now, I'm gonna close up by saying I've said it before and I'll say it again and I'll say it again for you guys to just forget it. We're not backing down. We're gonna see this through to the end. Um, for sure, you can bet your bottom dollar on that. 
Because here's the deal, guys. If the ATF can simply just say that the FRT-15 is a machine gun without that claim being based on actual laws written in the U.S. Code, what's to stop them from just reinterpreting the AR-15 altogether to be a machine gun? There's nothing to stop them from that. At some point, you've got to draw a line and say no. Like, you're wrong, and this isn't okay, and, and fight the fight. So basically, guys, I appreciate everyone's help and everyone's support, but we need to stand together on this, or we'll all lose our rights together. It's going to be one or the other. All right, guys, take care, and I'll keep you guys posted with another update here soon.